Hello, welcome to the Grow Group's training for relational environments. We're glad you're here with us today. We are so glad. Remember last time we talked about intentional leaders, and this time we're going to break down that relational environment a little bit more. Yeah, this is the second key in what we're doing making uh, to making disciples is, is creating relational environments. And the truth is, is that disciples are made in relationship with other disciples. And it happens with others who share the goal of being a disciple of Jesus. Uh, listen to the scripture here. This is this is from Proverbs. It says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. I mean, how many times have you been in a relationship where it's caused you growth? Um, when Especially if you're doing the same thing and you're headed in the same direction. Uh, the only way to grow is to spend time with other disciples to do life together, to get to know them. Um, and And as a leader, it's especially essential because you this is where you do get to know them, where you understand their character, where you, you're able to evaluate where exactly they're at, and to help them grow. Um, that's so key in, in helping people become discipleship. Disciples. And, you know, disciples do become disciples in relationship with other disciples. I know that most of my own spiritual growth has come from watching people, some, um, m many, many people who were way far out ahead of me and just, you know, sitting in a, in a circle with some people and someone says something so profound that I remember it to this day because we grow together. And so, you know, one of the questions might be, well, you know, uh, you know, how, how, how do we grow that relationship? And I want you to know that we, uh, First of all, we had an event and asked people who would like to become a disciple. Mm -hmm. And all those people who signed up, they all said in their heart that they would like to become a disciple. So that puts you in a pretty good place if you're thinking about because these are people who said this is what they want. Mm -hmm. But how do you grow that relationship? And part of it's just going to be is taking an interest to them as a person. So you could ask them about their past. You know, where did you grow up? What are the things that you did? That shape survey that we mm -hmm. gave you, that, that'll be useful for that. You know, um, you know, uh, what's going on in your life right now would be the present. What's happening, you know, in their life today, right now. You know, um, in youth, we do a thing called highs and lows. That's kind of our, our icebreaker we do every week. And we just sit around a circle and people share, you know, what was your high for this week? What was your low for or this week? That's a great way to find out what's happening in people's lives right now. And then what are their hopes and, and their dreams for the future? Future. You know, if we're going to have relationships with people, we have to understand that they don't happen by accident. Just like we have to be intentional with our leadership, we have to be intentional in, in our relationships. And, and these relationships, they're critical for our discipleship. I can't tell you how many times I hear people say, I, I, I just, I need somebody to, to be with. I need somebody to mm. grow with. I need somebody to, I think you said earlier, I need somebody to run with. You know, that concept is so very, very important. So what what are the keys to opening up those relationships? Uh, John, the Apostle John says this in the scripture. He says, if we claim to have fellowship with him, that's with, with God and Jesus, and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. And so what, what he's saying is that there's some keys to, to opening up the relationships. The first thing is, is that the relationship should be characterized by authenticity. Yeah, be you. Uh, yeah, yeah, because honesty creates trust. You know, if you're going to walk in the light, you have to be honest with each other. If you're going to have real fellowship, you have to be honest with each other. And the, the next key is that, that it includes mutual accountability. Mm. There should be transparency. You should share your struggles with each other. You should be able to encourage each other without fear of anything going wrong. And that, that goes to the last thing. The last key is there should be a safe relational environment. And this is something that Suzanne and I have talked about a lot in, in the churches that we pastor, that they should be the safest places you yes. ever walk into. Yes, because I mean, when somebody comes in, they need to be to be met with acceptance, and they need mm -hmm. to be met with compassion mm -hmm. and love and and grace and non judgment. Understanding that God is the one who will redeem them, and that you know this is so important for us to have this safe place, a place where people can come. And after the you know, it's a rough world out there, yeah. and you all know that it's a rough world out there. And church should be the one place where you can come, and you can sit down, and you can just exhale, mm -hmm. and you can just be. And you can know that there are others who are bearing burdens alongside of you. And that goes especially for the groups that we form because those groups are church. Yes. Jesus said, we're two or three gathered together in my name. There I am among them. That's church. 
And so those groups should be even safer places than church on Sunday morning. Yeah, because on Sunday morning, we can't say share your high and share your low, or we'd be here till 3.30 and the Baptists would get all the lunches, right? Yeah. And that means means there should be a sense of what I say to you is confidential in a group. So we always say what's What's said said here here stays stays here. here. And that's so key to this. But these relational environments, you know, you've got to have some real teaching and you've got to have some real learning. And there are just some things that, you know, we've tried to, you know, as we've prayed about this and thought about this and talked with our leaders and things, there's a couple of things that we think will help some real teaching and real learning occur. And one of those is to uh, keep it kind of small, four to eight people per group. The larger the group gets, the yeah. less time there is for others to share. And so we're intentionally uh, keeping it small. And sometimes you might say, well, but wait, there's only six people in my group. So if two of them are out, you know, what happens? What happens? is the four of you have a really good conversation that night and the best nights ever when that happens and then you want to you know you you kind of you want to work alongside people beside them you know it's like you know kind of I'm going to do this and I want you to watch and so you might lead a a week and then say hey would you be willing to 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 lead a week as well Mm -hmm. you know and then you do and then I'll watch and then then maybe you're going on vacation and say hey would you be willing to do it this week and that's how we kind of we model for people we're working beside them but we're discipling them a along the way. And then we do something called Bible story. And this is a thing that we want to work with. We want people to be able to read scripture and then be able to tell the story of what they heard. You know, did you hear, you know, Jesus met this woman at the well. And when he met the woman at the well, this happened for them to be able to do that themselves is super important. I love that in your own words. Yeah, too. just in you your know, own words. Yeah, you, don't, not, you, you don't, don't memorize to, it. You don't memorize yeah. it. None of us can have all the, uh, you know, there's 66 books in the Bible. None of us can memorize it. What but a you great can say, way to you know, create a worldview. Yeah, there's just, you know, yeah. this is a story and here's what happened in the story. If people can do that, they can tell the story. The story begins to become part of them. And we'll talk more about Bible story a little bit later. And then, you know, create this this safe place where there can be dialogue, where people can ask questions and they're never made to feel like they're not smart enough or they don't measure up. And then then if you don't know the answer, guess what? You can say the three little powerful words. I don't don't know. know. (laughs) I don't know. There are lots of things that we we just don't know. But you need to create that safe place where people know that. You don't need to be the expert. This world has enough experts. That's why we have Google. You just, yeah, well, we're going to be here. You know, it's, it, it, we don't, you don't need to be the expert. You need to be the person who creates the environment where people can ask the question. And so uh, one other thing that, re- that relational environments require, especially for these groups, is that we need to share shepherding values. God told a prophet Ezekiel once, and he was talking about the shepherds, the leaders over the nation of Israel. He said, should not the shepherds take care of the flock? He said, you have not strengthened the weak or healed the sick, or bound up the injured, you have not brought back the strays, or searched for the lost, you've ruled them harshly, brutally. So they were scattered, because there was no shepherd, and when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. Think about all the stuff that God is asking us to do, just in this one little bit of scripture. And we, and this is a, this is a value, a set of values, that everybody in the group should share, not just the leader, but everybody should have shepherding values. I think that's super important because a lot of times when we hear shepherd, we think of the one who's leading everybody else. But it's important to understand that that in this relational environment, you want to create it to where everybody is everybody's a shepherd because you're all caring for each other, and that the whole flock is shepherding one another. Listen to the values. And, and these are things that we need to work into our groups and even just outright just say them in our groups. Um, they're strengthening. We're trying to help each other get stronger to fight this spiritual battle. We're supposed to help each other put on our armor. It's, oh, and some days, don't you need somebody to put that armor on for you? Oh, or somebody to stand in front of you with the shields yeah. while you yeah. try to put your own on. Yeah. And, and then there's healing. And this can be just a simple thing. If somebody in your group's sick, the group ought to take care of them. Don't don't push that off to the church's pastors or staff or something like that. The groups themselves, in order to have a, a shepherding value, should be taking care of each other. When we show up at the hospital to find someone sick, the whole group ought to be there looking after Or have it. been there. Or have been there already. <laughs> and, and the nurses ought to be complaining to us because there's so many people running in and out of the yes. room. That's yes. what should happen. Wouldn't that feel good if something like that happened to you and you had all those people who were there for you? Definitely. And then there's binding. He talks about binding up those that are hurt. 
there are so many times when people get hurt in relationships and they'll be hurt in your groups. Trust me, this happens sometimes. People are learning to relate. And so how do you fix those relationships when they go bad? And so there's a binding thing that everybody in the group ought to be about restoring a relationship if a relationship's gone bad. And then searching. We ought to be looking for this. When somebody drops off the radar and they're not there for weeks at a time, we ought to go out searching for them. We get absence reports just so we can track down people that, that have gone missing for a long time. And, we ought, and when somebody wants to come back, if something's gone wrong and they won't come back, we ought to restore them with gentleness. Very gentle. The Bible says to restore people with gentleness. And that's what we ought to do too. And, and when we do this, when we share shepherding values, there's a deeper sense of ownership for the group. We can all experience God working through the group. And we move closer to seeing ourselves as disciple makers when we all have that shepherd kind of gene built into us. And then we overcome fears of, of relational risk too when we all feel this responsibility towards each other and that mm. is the end of this video this video that talks to us about relational environments and really at the end of the day it's talking to us about how important it is to create a safe place for people to grow because if it's safe they can become a disciple definitely definitely thank you so much thank for watching you. this we'll, we'll send out the next one soon